Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using the JetBrains C-Lion IDE. Now inside this IDE I've installed the GNU ARM embedded toolchain and I'm going to be talking to my target using a Sega J-Link. So this is my target, it's an STM32, it's actually a Cortex M7 and it has a, an ST-Link that I've converted to a Sega J-Link. Now the starting point is of course the Sea Lion IDE and inside here I've created a simple project and here we can see the source code. Let's take a look at the .txt file and here we can see the list of source files and I've also got a CMake file and as we can see I've told it to use the GNU ARM embedded toolchain. Let's check we can build this project. Let's do a rebuild and we should be able to see it successfully build our executable. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to first of all take a look at my source code and see, well, is it compliant to MISRA C 2012? I'd like also to be able to measure a number of metrics on the code, such as the cyclomatic complexity. And then I'd like to be able to execute this code and as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually exercised? Now, I probably won't get 100% coverage, so I'll then do some unit testing in order to be able to complement that coverage and get 100% structural coverage. Now, the starting point is I need to analyze the code. And the simplest way to do that is, first of all, to use the build import. So let me start the build import. And inside here, I'm going to run the build. So here we're seeing exactly the same build as what we saw earlier. And now we've analysed that build and we've seen we have an executable. We have some source files. We have some include paths and also some preprocessor symbols. So we have everything we need in order to be able to start analysing this code. And I can do that by opening the project in TB Vision. Now to save time, I've already done this. And here, we're now going to be able to do a code review. So I've done a code review against the Misra C 2012. And as we can see, there are quite a few violations. If I was to double click on a particular violation, we can see it highlights inside my editor. And if I wanted, I can now very simply fix that. All it requires here is a use suffix. But that's something I can do later. Now, what about the quality of this code? Well, let's take a look at a system call graph. And the system call graph shows us all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected and it's even color coded to show us system calls in green. Now, we can look at a number of different metrics. Metrics that give us an idea of testability. Things like the procedure exit points, the fan out, the file fan in. What about the maintainability matrix? Well, the most interesting here is probably the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and find the function that has the highest cyclomatic complexity, a value of 9. Well, let's view that graphically on a flow graph. And so here we have a graphical representation of the code. If I was to click on this block of code over here, we can see it corresponds to this block here. If I was to click on this particular block, we see it corresponds to this block here. In the same way, I can take a look at the, the various um, branches. So in this particular case, this is the branch from here up to there. OK, so what I'd now like to be able to do is to execute this code. And as it executes, find out how much of that code have we actually exercised. So let's go and perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So this is going to, first of all, instrument the source code. It's then doing the build. It's then going to connect to my target. So we saw the, the J-Link that flashed the target. It used GDB in order to be able to get the results back from the target. And now we're going to be able to see, well, how much of the code did we actually exercise as we executed the code? So let's take a look and put this this time into a coverage mode. And so here we can see in green, we have 100% coverage. And here we have the integer to ASCII we have 79% statement coverage. Well, let's again view this in a flow graph and we can see in green the paths we've taken and in red the paths we haven't taken. So there are a few branches here that we've not taken 
And more interestingly, possibly, we have a number of blocks here that we've not executed. Why not? Well, it looks like we've never had a value less than 180. So we could use the unit testing tool tbrun in order to be able to give a value less than 180 and then exercise this part of the code. So let me go and start tbrun. And inside tbrun, I'm going to open a sequence of test cases that I've previously created. So I go into my test cases folder. Here I've got some sequence of test cases for the integer to ASCII function. And if we take a look at one of these, we can see the inputs and most importantly, the expected outputs. So in this particular case, we've got something that's less than 180. So that should certainly get us increased coverage. So let's go and execute these. That's now generated the harness. It's built it. It's now connecting to the target. It's flashed it. It's executing again using the GDB. We're getting the results back from the target and we can see, most importantly, the tests have passed. So with these inputs, we got the expected outputs that we're showing here. At the same time, we can now take a look at the, the coverage and we should now find that for integer to ASCII, we have a 100% statement, 100% branch decision and 100% MCDC. OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can work with the C-Line IDE. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRE. Thank you.